The Beast of Tuxa, written by Trent Kanuga and Elizabeth Moon. Chapter 3. The Upside-Down Cabin Leaving Mao and Barty outside, Olaf felt his way around in the dark of the unusual old wooden structure. That kid's gonna be the death of me, he muttered to himself quietly. Maneuvering his way around hanging furnishings and fixtures coming up from the ground was tricky. With slow steps, he inched his way into what looked like a living room and immediately stubbed his foot on a ceiling lamp sticking straight up from the floor beneath him. He spun in a circle and tangled himself in cobwebs. Yeah, he squealed. Then he began brushing himself off frantically, tripping over objects at his feet and spinning in circles in an awkward dance. I'm all right. It's okay. He took a deep breath and then let it out slowly as he began scanning the darkened room. Anyone home? He called out. Now we're not here to do you no harm. We're just uh, travelers passing through. It sounded better in his head than it did out loud. But what else could he say that was less ridiculous? It seemed likely that he was talking to an empty house anyway. Regardless, there was no response. He stepped over a pair of pointed purple shoes as he backed into the room. How in the heck? Even the inside is upside down? But before he could finish his thought, he felt a sharp pain in the back of his head. Ah! He yanked his hat off and rubbed where it hurt. When he spun around, he saw that he'd backed right into a small candelabrum sticking down from a table attached to the ceiling above him. He reached down to pick up his hat and noticed the staircase that went straight up the wall and ended on the floor above his head. Perusing the room, it was as though gravity inside the cabin was split right down the middle. He couldn't quite figure out what was holding things down and what was keeping things up. On one side of the room, furniture, bookshelves, and other objects hung from the floor above as though nailed in place. More like magic has come into play, he thought, seeing as how the curtain stood up straight from the ground. On the other side, stacks of books sat in the corner beneath him on what should have been the ceiling. He could clearly see that the previous tenant was a bit of a pack rat and had filled the place from top to bottom. Both the ceiling below and the floor above was jam-packed from corner to corner with books, furniture, and bits and bobs. So many trinkets, knickknacks, and oddities that it could keep even Mao busy examining everything in here for weeks, he thought. He climbed up from the spiraling staircase, wrapped around a tall wooden column in the center of the room. Bracing himself, he gripped the banister hard and wondered if his eyes were playing tricks on him. If this was real, why hadn't he fallen up as he entered the room, he wondered to himself. Crossing into a hallway, he stepped over holes punched through the surface by tree branches. Rats squeaked and scurried out of his way as he crept. In the center of the room, surrounded by burned-out candles, crystal balls, and strange trinkets hanging from every corner, he could dimly see a man sitting in a chair. His head hung low under a large pointy hat. In the darkness he seemed quite small, but his robes flowed out across the entire room. Hello? Oh, hoy! <laughs> Olive exclaimed, feeling a little jumpy. There was no response, though. Not even a twitch. Not meaning to intrude, but my boy and I, Olive said, as he cautiously approached the figure. Still, the man was still. Reaching his gloved hand out toward the robed figure, it immediately collapsed into the chair, ash scattering out through its sleeves, filling the room. Now how long have you been here? Olaf wondered, half grossed out as he dusted off the dusty remains of the previous tenant. Moving on, he stepped through the corridor and into a study at the back of the cabin, stacks of books waiting in piles from floor to ceiling, ceiling to floor. Several layers of parchment were strewn across the table next to a cabinet containing an arrangement of jars filled with strange dark shapes. He couldn't make out the labels, but he could recognize some of the contents. Here was a heart, there was a human brain, there was a small forest creature, a reptile, an insect, glomps of strange-looking roots, plants, weeds, and herbs. Creepy, Olaf decided. Next to the jars laid a disheveled series of tomes. Olaf blew the dust off one, where it read, The Secret to Poisons. Then he reached for another, Curses and Barriers. Curses, he whispered, cringing. He placed it back where he'd found it. So the dark forest is... He stopped mid-thought and turned slowly around to identify what sounded like a dull, drowned whisper coming from above. Toward the center of the room hung an open book resting on an ornate golden cradle. The pages were blank, but a light shone conspicuously on the book itself. No, the light emanated from it, and the book sat just within arm's reach. As he extended his hand, Olaf felt a tremor 
and the whispering grew louder, causing him to pause. The book with the hypnotic incantation was lulling him to. A wizard's trap, he muttered. I see what you're up to, he said, shaking his finger at it with a nod and a smile. Better just move on, he thought, congratulating himself for resisting its allure. Not looking back, he pushed open the door on the other side of the room. It creaked open, tearing through more cobwebs and sending spiders skittering away. He stepped inside, but his foot fell right through the floor. Eeyowza, he cried. 